Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Flow Show, Thursday, 4th of April. And a busy, busy week going on by the looks of things. Uh, so I missed uh, quite a few things going on in my couple of days off. But uh, I'm back. I'm ready to get stuck into it. Thanks, as always, to K-Man for holding the fort. Good morning, mate. Hey, good morning, Ryan. Welcome back. I hope you had a nice uh, few days off over Easter, family time, quality time. Yeah, very much so. Quite busy. <laughs> I don't think I got to bed uh, earlier than uh, midnight every day. Oh, really? Out and about. But, uh, yeah, good Good to see some family and uh, see some old sites in London as well. So, yeah, good lovely. trip for me and the kids and the wife. And, uh, yeah. All back and ready to do battle with markets again. So let's get uh, stuck into it. Um, over in Japan, the former top currency diplomat uh, Watanabe says Japanese authorities likely to not intervene unless the yen falls sharply below 155 in the, that's in dollar yen. Um, so that's uh, his level that he thinks they're going to intervene at. So we still got this uh, undecided. Stuff going on at 152, still, still quite an amazing level. This one's proving to be. Um, we've had the uh, regional surveys out, or regional quarterly reports from uh, the Bank of Japan, um, and uh, the assessment has been cut in seven of the nine regions. Uh, many regions said that wage hikes are expected to broaden among smaller regional firms. That's good news for the BOJ. Um, but they said uh, branch, branch managers must watch developments, wage developments carefully. Some firms may be cautious about raising pay due to severe business environment. Um, they said a few regions also said that some firms were holding off on price hikes and were actually cutting prices for some goods. Um, that's not good for the BOJ on the inflation front. Uh, the Osaka branch manager highlighting uh, the differences that we get in FX. There's always two sides to a story when it comes to FX strength or weakness. He said that weak yen benefits sectors dealing with a booming inbound tourism um, and exports in the uh, Kinkai Western Japan region. Um, some small firms and manufacturers, though, are facing rising costs for from a weak yen. So weak yen is good for tourism. Good for exporters, uh, not good for manufacturers uh, and for import costs. So two sides uh, to the story there and says that many regional banks in Western Japan uh, raise the deposit rates after the end of negative rates, but are struggling to hike lending rates amid intense competition. So savings rates uh, might have raised up a bit, but uh, actually trying to make money from lending rates is proving a bit more tougher. Um, to pass on the potential those increases in rates, well, call, call them increase, the end of negative rates, shall we say. Um, so that's going to keep rates depressed amongst the banks. Um, over in Australia, well, we might as well have a look at it. We've got all the uh, PMI data coming out uh, overnight. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Let's go down to here. Um, so... Over in Australia, they use the services PMIs. Good improvement there, 54.4 beating expectations and last month as well. Um, PM Albanese in Australia says, uh, we hinted at further relief for energy bills will be coming in the May budget. Uh, they're putting in, they've got in place measures to, uh, let's call it suppress the prices of energy costs for businesses and for families. And they're looking to potentially extend that in their May budget, which means more fiscal uh, spending, shall we say, or fiscal uh, money being used for those relief uh, efforts. Um, but it also means that potentially there's inflationary pressures in the pipe if those ever get stopped. And you've got to know that if you're getting a, Relief in one hand, they're going to be taking it away with the other somewhere down the line. So that's uh, going to impact the fiscal side of things in Australia. Um, over in Switzerland, uh, there was some justification from the data as to why the SMB uh, decided to cut rates. Swiss CPI fell to 1%, uh, was expected to rise to one3 from one2 
uh, but it came in much softer. Uh, core CPI also coming in softer was expected to rise. A pip to 1.2 came in at 1% exactly. So weaker inflation picture there. Um, would they ever had a hint of these numbers, Kay, before uh, their meeting the other week? Not these ones, because um, actually Jordan was expecting the, um, the CPI to tick up a little bit at uh, the start of the year, but they are not getting any of it. Um, so, no, I don't think they uh, they had the numbers. They uh, should be as surprised as we are. Um, now, it, it's always good for, somewhere for, for, for the uh, Swiss corporates who were uh, moaning for months that the Swiss franc was too, uh, too strong. It was hurting their... Uh, their economic uh, models. Um, so all of this should be um, reasonably good news for those uh, for those people, and um, keep the expectations for perhaps another quarter in uh, in uh, a life in uh, where is it June, right? Let me quickly get my paper. I think they um, so three months is probably going to be June as well. Yeah, the twentieth of uh, of June. That's after the ECB and the um, and the next and, and the FOMC in June, um, yeah. So that should keep uh, the um, hopes alive for them um, as well to uh, to lower those rates a, a little bit and to uh, actually send the Swiss franc uh, a, a bit weaker so they can uh, they can export more again and make more money again. Yeah, exactly. They need to uh, dig into that uh, big loss that uh, they've been carrying for a long while. And they need to do uh, better on their stock trade. Oh, they should be uh, making a bit oh, of profit be, given them what stocks are doing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those that, what what we've seen uh, since the start of the year. That must be uh, they must be making uh, SNB uh, hedge fund must be making uh, back a lot of money. What what they lost over the past year, year and a half. Yeah, maybe they stuck it all in arc, and uh, that's why they suffered all those losses. Oh, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll see what those numbers end up looking like this year. Yeah. Uh, over at the ECB, ECB's the cost says Eurozone inflation data was positive. That was the uh, softer inflation numbers that we saw. Um, says that uh, the central scenario points to a first rate cut in June. So another one in the June camp for that. Uh, this morning we did get PPI data out from there um, and PPI coming in uh, not as negative as expected. Uh, eight point minus eight point three percent was expected to come in minus eight point six percent. Still a big negative number. Um, the prior got uh, revised up as well uh, from eight point six to eight uh, percent month on month as well. Just coming in a little bit softer. Still, all these numbers have got negatives on them, so that's going to keep um, the disinflationary pressure coming in. Uh, although this is uh, obviously lagging behind the CPI numbers uh, that we've got. Um, we had the uh, UK uh, DMP uh, decision making panel survey on inflation, one year inflation expectations uh, coming down to 3.2% uh, from 3.3% previously, one year CPI expectations are a little bit softer there, uh, but well above where the Bank of England uh, would like it. Uh, we'll go through uh, all the other PMIs as well while we're here at Spain. Seeing a, a decent improvement, 56.1, beating forecasts and higher than last month. Italy as well, beating forecasts higher than last month. Uh, even France putting in uh, a better performance, still negative, but beating expectations and higher than last month. Uh, let's see, uh, sorry, that was the composite in the uh, services. It beat expectations, but uh, was a pip lower than last month. Germany as well. Moving into expansion, whoopee, go Germany. Um, beating those expectations and a rise on the month. Uh, maybe they've seen the worst of things. Um, maybe not in manufacturing, given the numbers over there, but uh, services uh, doing better over there as well. Uh, that helped drag the Eurozone number up to 51.5, better than expected as well. UK services, uh, disappointing, uh, coming in softer than the flash, 53.4, came at 53.1. Um, so that confirmed a bigger drop than we saw from the prior month, February 53.8. Uh, so not overly good. And the uh, comments, the comments in most of these PMIs 
bar France were that inflation, uh, sorry, bar Spain were that inflationary pressures are still highly evident. Italy seeing um, some increased inflation pressures. Um, a lot of these pressures coming from wages, but there are also pressures from input prices and the prices being charged. A similar story there. In the UK, the comments were a little bit more, less bullish, shall we say, um, than uh, it has read in recent times. So maybe this pickup we've seen in the services may already be running out of steam. Uh, we'll see if that uh, is the case in future numbers. Uh, coming over to the US, uh, and we'll start with what we got yesterday. ADP uh, showed no wobbles there, 184K, higher than expected, higher than last month. Um, so no real wobbles or worries there ahead of Friday's NFP. Um, I'll put the link up to INFP competition shortly. That's open and up and running, if you want to have a guess there for tomorrow. Um in the details for the ADP, though, there were some inflationary pressures. Uh, they, they note uh, some wage numbers there. They have uh, uh, an indicator for job stayers, so people staying in job in jobs. Um, now that fell last month to 5.1% and came in unchanged in yesterday's report, 5.1%. However, job changes... So people who are moving jobs, uh, pay rose from 7.6% to 10%. Uh, so there is still some higher wage pressures there from firms uh, trying to tempt workers to join them, um, so offering higher wages. Um, that, has, that is a bit different to what we've seen in the, the quits numbers in the jobs oh, yeah. report, which has been a bit softer. And the, the quits numbers is an indicator of people who are voluntarily changing jobs, usually because they're moving up uh, the ladder. Um, so that number, a bit of odds there between the jolts, quits, and the, the changes there, although jolts is a month or so behind this data. Um, so that may be uh, something that's reflected in latter data points. But, uh, yeah, okay, a bit of a uh, mismatch there, although it's, yeah. you can't really say yeah, it's 100% correlation. Yeah, absolutely. Because in 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 former numbers, and even and even if you dive into the ISM, then with the um, with the employment index remaining sub fifty, um, it, it's a bit of a mismatch compared to what we saw in the jolts. Because the quit the quits rate actually um, dumped quite a bit, and uh, in combination with uh, with some data that we had uh, before, it may actually. Put a bit less pressure on 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 labor costs. So um, yeah, I think tomorrow that well that makes tomorrow uh, for for a very interesting read. I said yesterday. I said on the, on the face show. I said perhaps the the combination of what we have seen um, well yesterday then uh, between the ISM and uh, and Powell speaking may may actually be a bigger mover than uh, than what we are going to get at the end of the week on the NFP. But it makes things a uh, it spices things up uh, a, a little bit again. Um, this being said, we saw uh, we saw decent moves um, on the back of yesterday's uh, releases and um, over positioning, I guess, uh, in in a way as well. Yeah, I was going to say because the um, the ISM overall it was a positive number, but the details were looked uh, much softer. You know, new orders down. Um, as you said, uh, you know, employment lower or staying negative um, there, 48.5, still in contraction. Um, and this is the biggest uh, sector um, versus manufacturing. Um, also, that prices number coming down as well. Um, did, I mean, I wasn't about, did that spark the uh, sell-off in, in the buck? Because it seemed to come around that well, time. Well, I mean, it, it just, um, we had like, I think, a 10 pips, uh, 10 pips or so move, Um when when it came out but then um yeah it um it, it did uh, it did weigh on the dollar and um i think the market <clears throat> as i said was uh, was likely a bit of a position we had like decent levels as well which i spoke about in in, in for instance in the aussie just below 65 in the euro dollar uh, in those low 107s um cable respecting that 125 40 down to 125 um and although i was like relatively positive on uh, on on the dollar and, until then, I uh, I really had to revise uh, revise my opinion and uh, and uh, went out of, of of a lot of dollars that I that I that I actually was running. Um, 
before uh, the 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 real uh, move lower uh, move lower started. It's um yeah, it's over positioning, but also the people as we are in this employment week. Um, I think people are looking for potentially um, a weakening or rebalancing job market because as as I told you, Powell. Um, told us last Friday that um, that the, the dual mandate comes the, the the second part of the dual mandate comes back to the fore, and um, so even if you get sticky inflation numbers, if you combine it with a weaker weaker is a, is also a big word, but if you combine it with with a slightly less buoyant um, uh, labor market, which we are in in, in the thick of it uh, now. I think that's what the market is is looking at, despite what's going on on the yields, despite what's going on on um, on uh, in 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 the rest uh, in the rest of the world. But that that for the dollar bit, and then we also have to note because there's always a second uh, a second part to the um, to any dollar pair is that we we have to admit that the euro, the Aussie, Kiwi, even if the dollar rallied uh, uh, in the in the in the start of April. Uh, defying the seasonals at the end of March and stuff, those currencies remain relatively resilient. And um, it's still one big pot, we can say, but we, we can also not deny that there are perhaps a little bit of green shoots in the rest of the world as well. So it's it's a bit of a combination, I think, and the market being a little bit overconfident and a bit overfocused on... on um, when when the stock market came down, when the U.S. yields rallied, um, and and just diving into dollar loans again, and uh, now needing to once more, once more reassess and 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 potentially reprice. Yeah, I mean it is it is a very messy picture. Well, we'll talk about prices in more detail, but uh, you know, see very in the dollar week, and while yields are up here, it's just it, it's another one of those things that just uh, you know it doesn't sort of fit the recent narrative. Uh, at the moment, which you, you know, you've got to expect in trading. Nothing is all, you know. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, correlations, Co correlations. You know, they break down. Well, I mean, the correlations. I mean, one after the other just gets uh, uh, thrown out of the window, and then, yeah. But then, like two, three days later, it comes back with a vengeance. I look at the Aussie and compared to copper, for instance, it it, it completely ignored the copper rally. For uh, for yeah. a week, and now all of a sudden, um, it it catches up in a, in a, in a pretty big way. We can we can say because Aussie is one and a half percent higher. Yeah, very much so, very much so. Um, right, so uh, we had all that data. Then we had uh, a few uh, Fed speakers out, including the main man himself. Uh, but we'll start with Bostic, uh, and he said the economy is maintaining the strong momentum it has had. Um, says here, I think you can still get growth and get inflation to continue to come down. So that soft landing narrative. Um, he says that's partly why he changed his forecast, as the Fed would have to be more patient than expected. And that's why he's now still forecasting only one rate cut this year. He was a, a two rate cutter or two cut rater, however you want to call it. it says the road is going to be bumpy. Um, and over the last several months, inflation hasn't moved very much relative to 2023. So a few more Fed heads uh, saying that uh, inflation hasn't actually moved a lot. Uh, well, going on for nine, 10 months now. Uh, Fed's Kugler said some lowering of rates this year is still likely appropriate um, and that we should withhold judgment on the recent inflation data. If conditions change, uh, then he's prepared to change the policy outlook. Um, now, Fed's power was out. Um, and from what I can see from the comments, didn't really change his tone. Uh, said there is time to deliberate over rate cuts. Um, if the economy evolves as the central bank expects, most federal or most FOMC committee participants see it as likely appropriate to begin cutting policy at some point this year. So to do so, the Fed still needs greater confidence of inflation moving sustainably down towards its 2% target. Uh, it's too soon to say whether recent inflation readings are more than just a bump and that the labour market rebalancing seen in data on quits, job openings and other employer and worker surveys uh, and the continued decline in Wage growth um, is 
heading the right way. Risks to cutting rates too soon, uh, or there are risks to cutting rates too soon as well as waiting too long. So those comments, Kay, I mean, I've read headlines saying that uh, it's Powell mainly saying that uh, rates are still going to be cut irrespective of what the data is doing. So that's put in a more dovish line. But those comments are still pretty much the same. So again, you know, Reading those comments, I thought the uh, dollar would uh, have kept its strength, but again, it's it goes against these comments. But is that just a market reading one thing one week and another thing another week? Yeah, for one, but um, <laughs> um, I think he's just once again um, walking the 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 either the fine line or both ends of uh, of the spectrum, um, like as if can go up and can go down, you know, um, everybody is data dependent. And, and perhaps the, the, the what's going on in the market is they're saying that when he's not hawkish, he's, uh, he's dovish, you know. Um, but uh, I think independent, independently for, from that, and, and you, you can hardly call it dovish, but the fact that he, and, and again, I'm coming back to the same thing, the, the fact that he speaks now again about the dual mandate, is telling the market something that it's rather it's it's not solely inflation that we're trading anymore, um, or, or that we're looking at anymore. So inflation could in fact remain slightly sticky, and them still um, starting to cut rates because they 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 have said everything right. Either it it, it has to be sustainably around two percent, but then at the same time they're saying or the next line they're saying like. But it's efficient that we're going towards two percent to to start uh, to start cutting, and um, and that's where um, confused is, is maybe not the right is maybe the right word actually, but yeah, the market can is looking a bit uh, confused and needing to shift the, its attention now to to the job market at an equal ratio to inflation. We've been trading inflation for for two or three years, and because the rest was was doing like extremely well, um, so now we have the uncertainty about uh, the jobs market, and uh, we were talking about that. We talk about that uh, every day in in the room. So we were talking about that this morning as well, and it, and it's it feels to me like now the market is ready to to slap the dollar on any weakness seen in the in the labor market because of his speech last last Friday, and um, well that's what I've been saying for for a long while now is that. Uh, uh, the job market being such a big domino, if that starts to 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 tilt a little bit, there could be uh, trouble ahead for at least temporarily for uh, for the dollar. And it seems that we are now in this in this uncertainty zone. Okay, so you you you're not only trading or, or you're not you're not trading eighty percent inflation, twenty percent the rest. You're now trading fifty fifty, and and that's probably one of the reasons why uh, an overly um, confident dollar bull market has has to really rethink once more. Um, we're in this constant repricing still, uh, constant repricing still. And and correlations are, uh, are um, uh, how shall I say, uh, 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 random uh, random at best. Uh, once they, they kick in uh, in force and then uh, the next day, uh, they, there's not one single correlation working anymore. So um, it, it's still, we're still in this, in this, uncertain period which is somewhere what i've been saying since the since the start of the year we we we, we had this first quarter where the dollar made the comeback to, we, we, it, it lost everything uh it made it, it lost a lot over a year and now it, it, it made a lot of it back and now we are q, q we start in q2 and q2 is is could be the first part of q2 we we could be in a scenario like we're seeing right now up and down and up and down, and then towards the end of Q2, decision time. That it, and it's still I'm still in this in this global scenario thinking, um, and um, yeah, we we could see a lot more. It, it, it may be volatile, but but still remain in uh, remain in ranges somewhere. Yeah, I mean at the moment it's it's good volatility. You know, there's bad volatility and there's good volatility, and this is this is good volatility because it's giving you. The moves around the ranges. Uh, you know, if you if you look at euro dollar, um, you know, my big level was one hundred seven. We've kept that range. Uh, we had a prior level one hundred seven twenty twenty five that held. 
Now we're holding the 107.60 again after breaking below it, busting up through the zone, but finding it tough up here. So it's given us decent ranges to play. Um, if you can trust them, that the, the problem is you can't get too scared. Can't get out to one idea. Yeah, exactly. You know, one, if the Euro's fall, been falling for, you know, the best part of, of half a month, you can't think, oh, right, well, this is it. It's the end of the world. The Euro's going to the 105, going to parity, um, because, boom, it just slams into the market, says enough's enough. It hits a decent level, and then it goes the other way. Um, in the same way we climb back here, can't think it's going to 115, um, because, you know, it's probably going to run into trouble into the, the 109. So good range playing. I mean, the... the the dollar yen that's out that's out in its own world still. So you know I'm I'm still not inclined to touch it um, unless I get uh, some headline related dip to buy or something. But I'm I'm still I'm still fearful about shortening up here. I'm fearful about maybe trying to break trade. Um, oh, so yeah, this this one really is is still just to let it do its thing. I'm going to sit back with a popcorn and, and yeah. watch it. I um, too much of a touchy yeah. level this one. Yeah, exactly. It's too exactly. much. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's too much. We've seen the dollar. Okay, let's say we seen we seen the dollar uh, X yen X Swiss. We see the dollar like lose a percent, um, and uh, and this one still still hanging around there. And uh, I've been talking about it on the flows. I mean, this could really, this could really trade any. Um, in any type of of uh, of, of scenario, uh, really, um, could take out the 152, uh, rally to 153, even other even 154, and then uh, the MOF wakes up and says like, well, hey, hang on, a, hang on a little bit. The yen is getting absolutely hammered here. Uh, why would dollar yen be up when the rest of the dollars are are lower? And then all of a sudden intervene, and you find yourself at 148 or 447. I don't know. Or you could have like a trigger of the 152, and then all of a sudden reverse, and you find yourself at 150 and a half. And and it could be it could be really anything. Or we could just hang around here for another. I I, I suppose. Or I would, I could imagine that tomorrow over over the NFPs we are going to make a, de a decision for this one. Um, but in the meantime, it's uh, it's just trading, as I said. I mean, it's trading around barriers. We can't touch the figure, and uh, and it's not going below uh, 151 and a half, 151 quarter, because the same defenders are buying back uh, the lows. That's 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 exactly how how I. Traded and now I saw barriers trade when I was uh, when I was in banks. This is the this is the scenario, you know, um, and and that makes it all very uncertain about what's going to happen around the figure once uh, once it it probably sooner or later it probably will trade. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it makes it very uncertain to know what's happening around here. So I'm uh, I'm not having any cash. I'm having just uh, my option and I'm trading around it and that's it. Yeah, I mean, these. This has got to be the the biggest uh, barrier action we've I've seen in years um, yeah. up here. You know, I've not seen anything like this for years. Yeah, uh, it's why I'm 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 still leaning to the possibility that there's unofficial official interest up here. Mm, yeah. Uh, because yeah, it's not, and it's a, it's a funny number, one fifty two. You know, you'd expect it around one fifty, and we saw barriers around one fifty last year when we got up here, and we you know we've seen action there. But uh, yeah, it's it's really quite something. This level, really quite something. And uh, yeah, but you know, I mean, funds, asset managers, even even some of the some of the Japanese companies, they, 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 there can be a load going on, you know. And that those things are not reported in in whatever CFTC or the or, or the other uh, reports yeah. that we that we see. They are not in there. That that is uh, what I've been telling people as well i mean if you look at stuff like uh the code cftc or or there's there's a lot not in there um wh what's going on in the market i mean imagine you um we were talking about those big uh those big uh, uh barriers that we had in the past uh, um done by china they are not going to appear in any report you know they, but they can have yeah. like five billion sitting uh, a five billion dollar barrier sitting at 152 uh, i mean if it's one of them even even the big hedge funds, you know, they they can they can do loads. They can do really really big amounts. Yeah, very much so. Um, just usually we find them on the other side trying to push uh, push the buttons of uh, the MOF and whatever. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I think the risk is real. I, I think, yeah. 
I, if 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 they if we would have seen a gradual rise of the of the dollar across the board, I would have said like, nah, there's no there's no way they are going to intervene before 155, 160, even just taking those rates as an example, because we have to know they don't have like a fixed rate in their in their mind. Um, but today, with the rest of the dollars being uh, being under the cush, um, I, I'd say it, it heightens the risk if we get a, a fly through and uh, a, a spike of 100 points if we get through, because we can imagine there must be tons of stops lying just above there as well. Uh, yeah. 100 points uh, fly through, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really rule it out, you know, I would really not rule it out. Yep, man, it's going to be uh, going to be another interesting watch. And again, and then the other side, if if we get a really strong NFP and it can't break it, well, you know, that's going to uh, that's going to make the level even bigger. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's a good it's a good bit of uh, watching. Not that I'm that interested in trading mm -hmm. it right this minute. Um, so yeah, right. The only other headline I've got maybe something to watch out for: Air France pilots uh, are calling for a broad strike. Um, and they're protesting, uh, quite ironically, about a government bill which is trying to limit the right to strike in the transport sector. So it's nothing to do with pay or wages, whatever. Um, but as we know with France, if they get a bee in their bonnet over there, like with the farmers, um, they will crank things right up. Um, so it could lead to other strikes coming into play, which then has its economic implications. Um, so that's just a headline that caught my eye uh, from yesterday. Um, right, that's uh, all I've got uh, on the headline front. Let's, Kay, you got anything? Uh, or are you obviously no. covering no, all no, all no, the rest is all uh, opinion pieces and stuff. Uh, I saw uh, one of the uh, Bridgewater, uh, Bridgewater, um, co CIO uh, saying that uh, the dollar is too high and uh, and gold is too high, but then uh, <laughs> you know, I yeah. mean, those, those, ah, I. I don't know. Uh, I don't have anything else, mate. Um, move yeah. on, move on, move on. Thank you, mate. Right, I'll knock up the link to the NFP competition. Uh, that's there in the uh, Zoom chat now. So if anyone hasn't had a guess yet, get your guesses in. Uh, lucky prize, uh, three lucky prizes uh, or win. Three prizes for lucky winners. Um, they're free month on the Forex Analytics platform. And don't forget to... Um, join us on the Face Show on Friday where we're making a significant announcement. Um, if you're not registered for Face already, um, then uh, you can check out the link uh, on our website, forexanalytics.com. Um, if you're already registered, you don't need to do anything. Just turn up and get ready for that news there. Right, so let's have a quick look around. And, it's, you know, sometimes it's easier to, when you're not watching markets, when you're not fully focused on markets, it's easier to, see things maybe a bit differently you haven't got you're not in the noise and everything you know i'll come in and uh i've only had uh, you know brief looks at the charts or whatever just make sure my positions are doing okay um uh but for this one it's uh, the euro it's keeping the trend going you know 107 was my key level um down here if we were going to start breaking this trend but uh, it's still going or it's looking like it's still going we're sitting pretty much uh, just above the middle of it at the moment uh, so it's it's still a bit 50 50 which way it goes um but it's certainly looking not as bearish as it was a few days ago you know this is why i highlighted last week this uh, 107.20s area just as another area to keep an eye on and that's where we found the bounce from um james is saying it looks like a bit of a, a pivot uh, on euro dollar quite possible um if we hold below this 108.70 the top of this zone like we did previously um then that may keep this downtrend intact so it's trends within trends within trends that was said also looks like an Elliott waivers uh what dream this one um so it needs to get above this zone and then maybe we have another crack at the 109s it will need to take out these highs to continue the overall uptrend um, then this, this all these look like a bit of corrections going on so let's see what happens with the data to come uh, again where we finish the week um, is going to be important it seems to be important every week now where we finish the week whether we're below a level or above a level um, so if we're above 108.70 the end of this week then as I say maybe we're going to have a crack at these highs and if we take them out then we're going to have a probably a run to 110 
and then maybe we have a think about maybe running a bit higher. But if we don't, that'll keep this downtrend in play, and maybe we do go and have a look at the 107 or even lower. But uh, the levels are showing up. They are playing nicely. Um, cable, I was hoping we would get a move down to the lower 125s, maybe even the 125 itself. But uh, again, it's held up. Uh, some of these levels just above the big figure um, so it's keeping this intra range shall we say away from the bigger range 125s 125 and a quarter and then down to 125 here so keeping the wall from the door bounces though limited around this this is a bit of a pivot level um, not really one I'd trade 126.70s but uh, it seems to be one where if we're below we head lower if we're above we head higher but this one is staying firmly within that range. Again, this one was looking weak. Seeing people talking about 123, even worse. Couldn't even get to 125 before the bounce. So that's that's why you, you can't get overly biased one way or another. Don't get sucked into the rhetoric, into the moves, into the, the commentary that you'll see on Twitter. Um, you know, when something's falling, it's the end of the world and it's going here, it's going there, and it's going another 500 pips. And then... Uh, Everyone gets short at the bottom on the fear, and then boom, that's when you get kicked in the arse. Um, so trade the levels, not the rhetoric. Um, Euro sterling. Here we are again. Looking like it was going to be heading lower again. Maybe another test of 85. Couldn't get there. Now we're back up. Mooching around this 85, 70s again, which is being a bit washed out at the moment. So it's not really a level. Um, again, it's sort of a pivot level, but uh, say it's, it's becoming a bit messy so gonna probably ignore that one it's all becoming a bit messy in here um i see no reason again for a move either in either direction uh, we know where europe is at we know where the uk is at and the market is seemingly well priced for that as well but i would keep an eye on that uk data um, it has been the green shooting of late but is it going to start turning a bit softer again and uh, we'll see that uh, affects the quid because that's going to affect this pair, obviously. And uh, yeah, green right. shooting Europe as well. You're always going to find that Europe will outweigh the UK. Yes, mate. Um, I'm. Uh, uh, it's. Uh, it seems to be the cross to express um, the possibility of of a bit of a, a softer Bank of England starting to uh, starting to show up. That's. Um, that's. I think the reason why we keep on rebounding. It. Um, if anything, I'd say this this could be one that um, if there is a shift in in BOE sentiment, a decent shift in BOE sentiment, that could uh, probably uh, push up a little bit. It's it's all very rangy. It's all very very um, in 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 the bigger scheme of things, very quiet on the on this cross, but. Uh, forces to admit that it's it's holding those those lower levels, right? So I I think that's that's going to be uh, for sure a cross that's going to be affected by uh, Bank of England expectations going forward. Not not really knowing which side, but it just does appear to me that um, it won't need too much of a, of a softer tone uh, to uh, to start uh, ticking uh, ticking higher again now. Uh, up to where I don't know, but. Um, it's um it's one where um for as long as 85 holds don't fight it i uh, i i'd say in the in the more medium term yeah thanks mate um now i'm going to have a quick look at s&p's uh, and i shall turn it over to k man for some of his input um cuz i'm still chewing over a lot of my charts um this one had a another little blow off let's get rid of some of this stuff going on here just clean up so i'm not even cleaning the charts up yet um, yeah, it had a little bit of a blow off and in a decent pullback, and it did what it needed to do. Finally, it retested the support area. Remember, I was saying this is a bit of no man's land in here, what it wants to do, and look where it stopped right on the support. Um, you know, this is why you need to build your price picture as it's going along. Then you find out where the places are where the price needs to do something, uh, whether it's going to start showing it's breaking down or whether it's going to keep the trend going. So, done its job held right in that area there and now we've had uh, another bounce back up so it keeps this momentum going that high even though it looks a bit of a blowout and we had a big loss from it that now is looking like a decent refresh of the trend which is what you need in trends you need good refreshes and we've had them all the way along higher 
higher, higher, refresh, refresh, higher. So it's keeping the momentum going. Now we need to see what it does up here. Do we find resistance again in that first area that we made the top, 5260s? Do we find resistance against the recent high up in the 80s? If we find a resistance below at the 60s, then that's going to maybe indicate we've got something a bit more stronger in terms of a top because we can't quite get up to that high again. So the sellers are protecting that high. Um, then maybe we see it coming down to test support again or going a bit sideways. Um, it's going to need a break of support before shorts can really grab this by the horns uh, and push their case because they still keep getting short and then uh, probably getting knocked out of their stops on the way back up again. So still undecided here, but the levels are being defined. So if we break above 52.80s, then we're probably heading for 53 and the trend will continue. Uh, but technically doing all right. I'm still holding a little bit of longs. So uh, it's, it's nothing's changing here in terms of how the trend's behaving for that one. Um, Kay, do you want to uh, take it over, mate? I could do with... Uh, even some analysis, updated stuff. There we go. Okay, I, I need to get back to uh, to go back to the to the sterling because people on uh, who were in here yesterday and who were on face, um, I told them like say if there's if there's any wobble in the um, in the uh, um, in the dollar or uh, or anything, this one um, could could be in for a bit of a bounce. And I said like up to one twenty six or perhaps. 126 uh, a bit above and that's uh that's where we are just because of this you know this red red line here you know i spoke about that uh brand you remember right um and so down to 125 um support area i know ryan already spoke about it but um, i just want to reiterate what i uh what i showed yesterday yesterday we were trading around here um so when I say respect though, that, that area, um, the market has respected it and we are uh, uh, creeping uh, creeping back up now, or at least uh, well, a little bit faster than creeping back up. Um, this is a bit of a prior high around here, but I would really think that uh, the, the more solid resistance would come in from 126.90 up to 127.20. And then we have like a, a more longer term trend line coming in here. Okay. The, the, the head got a little bit cut off. Oh, it's actually, I should, should I put this lower? Ah, between the daily and the four hours. What? Why is, why is that? Um, and that's going to come in around, around, um, yeah, closer to 128 and then closer to those, uh, the, that last high here again. That is in case we get weaker numbers. I, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say today necessarily. I think today could be a bit of a transition day. Uh, okay, we have the initial claims out, but unless they, there is like one huge surprise over there, um, the, the, it's not gonna gonna move too much. I think we are in a little bit of a, a perhaps a transition day today. Um, reflect on what's happened uh, on the rejections of of some pairs and uh, and then see what's going to happen tomorrow. But um, there's been very interesting developments huh, on the uh, on the Aussie um, yesterday as well. I was saying respect 6480. And I think 6480, as I said, was was my bigger level than 65 actually. Uh, but then we didn't go for a retest at all. I, I tried to to shyly play against this uh, this zone here, 65 and a quarter. But then after the uh, data and then when the Aussie started to uh, to move higher, I cut I cut uh, my my short. Or minor, like 20, 20 pips or so um, loss, but that's uh, that's all right on a on a small position. Sometimes we have to be reminded that we are not uh, invincible, right? Um, and now we are already breaking above this trend line resistance, which is uh, sixty five ninety, and we are up into the next uh, small resistance zone. Okay, um, that shows you how fast things can change because it was looking quite offered um this was looking like a consolidation as well before trying to re-attack the downside nothing nothing of the likes happened and we are uh, flying back up so um then you look at uh, stuff like copper and so and you say like, well it's logic that the aussie is higher but copper rallied be well before uh, the aussie so this this seems to be 
uh, catch up and people just being short Aussie. A lot of negativity had been thrown at the uh, at the Aussie or the Kiwi over the past sessions, but um, that is probably due to positioning and people needing to get out of it. Okay, um, yeah, Ali, and, and a lot of people were in um, in the same boat. You know, um, a bit of overconfidence uh, on the, on the dollar, perhaps, and uh, we have seen um, what that can do. Right. Um, Kiwi never made it to uh, to the 59, uh, the figure zone where I thought it, it may go. I, I didn't have anything in, in it anymore. I covered the I covered them way before actually this uh, this move started. Um, but this is uh, crawling back quite a bit. We are uh, trading around the 6040 prior low. Uh, we are around there. Actually, we are bang on it. I'd say keep an eye on what's happening for a starter around uh, 60, 65, 60, 60, 70. And then here we are going to have a bit of a crossroad if that would move up and that's 61, the figure, which is also a prior high around there, 0507. So around 61, the figure is going to be an important one. And that also is already thinking about probably tomorrow um, I don't think, I don't see anything unless the dollar is, uh, the market is really getting um, traumatized by, uh, by by its dollar loans, um, anything to, to really drive it through today. I think we consolidate a little bit, um, could go back down to uh, 60, the figure even without, uh, without changing much. And then we have to, oh, by the way, um, I covered my, uh, my Euromix yesterday and for for um for a couple of reasons um i know we are still in, in in a very negative environment globally but then yesterday against my somewhere feeling the, the euro um was a bit too resilient we had those um pmis as i was saying like uh they perhaps shoots but we still have to decide whether they're green shoots or not um but then yesterday with the dollar coming off traditionally um euro emerging market or euro versus what is close to uh, the us in this case the mexican peso has a tendency of, of creeping up a little bit uh, the dollar mix hasn't moved much but um this one i just uh, just took it up for now and i'm going to wait to see if we can make it back somewhere above 15 uh, above 18 towards the low 18s 18 15 or even uh, 18 20 or so um, we do have consumer confidence out um, a bit later in uh, in uh, Mexico and also the, the monetary policy minutes later, a policy meeting which was extremely neutral, okay? It wasn't dovish at all, it was extremely neutral. So we will have to see if there's any, uh, if there's any other details coming out of there. Uh, and then very quickly, because I'm looking at the clock as well, very, very quickly looking at the, um, at the Swiss uh, charts, uh, we are powering on after the lower than expected uh, Swiss CPI. So um, don't change the winning team. I think uh, this is still um, looking quite good. And uh, we, Euro Swiss is likely on its way to high 98s, low 99s. Um, I do think, as I said uh, already earlier, that there is a possibility that we undo this whole move. Uh, but... Um, I'd say keep a, keep an eye on 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 every like five ten points around around the big figures. If we if we clear this one, and I see little reason not to, but uh, always you know uh, positioning and things uh, take it into account. I see little reason not to go to parity um, at at uh, some stage. Same thing on the Sterling Swiss. Um, we we have held this this crossroad here in the low 114s and now we are uh, gradually uh, moving higher bit of a zone coming up here uh 115 and above for the next big figure big figure and a half i'd say keep an eye on uh, on what's happening there because we have prior highs um that we need to uh that we need to take into account okay and um the uh late 2022 um high especially if we if we would make it up there i think uh, we need to pay close attention i'm i'm still long i'm uh, i'm taking bits and pieces off i like this slice and dice um theory and uh, and the uh, um 
the way of, of trading. Um, now, if it goes back a little uh, into the low 114s, high 113s, I can try to, to reload a little bit. Uh, dollar Swiss, different, different, uh, a, a bit of a different one because um, the dollar, because of the dollar, the, the dollar in itself is, is showing signs and um, I'm not going to say of real weakness because we're still turning around this uh, this trend line here, but I'm a little uh, cautious. I'm cautious. So I, I've decided yesterday I, uh, I already um, took some off before uh, the US data and then on the on the rally um, this morning I, I just decided to took the rest off around this uh, around this trend line here. I, th I still think in the medium term we are going to at least get back to um, the end of year highs around 92 and a half, but I want to be cautious just ahead of tomorrow's uh, labor data because they are so important. Okay, and and uh, it's better to take the money and then sit sit back and wait. We can always uh, surf another wave um, when uh, when when needed or or when warranted. Uh, but uh, on the dollar side, I decide to be a little bit cautious here. And that closes my votes for the day. Back over to you, Ryan. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, thanks for all your valuable insight as usual. Um, I haven't even seen what we've got coming up today. We've got much coming up today in the US. Uh, the claims, um, but, claims, but um, yeah. Yeah, claims. Uh, and that's about it. Yeah, uh, Barking, Goolsby. Mester, Mester, we know already, right? She she says uh, she is still in the three in the three cuts camp, but uh, patience to wait. And she actually, I think she or Dali said uh, June is is a likely scenario. Yeah, thanks, mate. So uh, yeah, not a lot of data out, but uh, those jobless claims we watch closely, um, even though they're after um, or later than uh, tomorrow's NFP. The market might still have a little move if there's a big variation. So anyway, that's that for today. Thank you very much for coming to the Flow Show. Uh, don't forget to enter the NFP competition and uh, we shall see you all tomorrow for NFP Friday. Have a good one, everybody. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.